Welcome back everybody to Revit 2016. Okay, so um been looking at this uh project here. Um I'm just gonna go into this section here, so double click on the, the head here. And um and there we go. So like we've seen this before I believe, so and um what we do do is just sort of look around and sort of see what sort of issues we've got. So I'm seeing a couple of windows here that if I click on that one, that's an AW1810. That's the same one, but they look different. Okay, so let's go to the first floor plan. They're up there somewhere. Okay. There's one of those windows and there's... Oh no, apologies. There they are there. One there and one there. Ah, now I've seen the problem here. Right, if I click left click on this one here, the top one, we'll see the flip arrows on the outside, which means the window is oriented correctly. So this is the external side. If I click on this one here, we'll see the flip arrows on this side. Okay, which means we've got different detailing, or well, the external detailing is actually shown on the inside. So easy fix, just we either use the space bar or we can just click on these little arrows here and go left click. Okay, let's flip the window around. If I double click now, there we go. So those two windows look the same. Nice little quick fix there. Okay, so where we're up to now with regards to sections, we've got to, we've got to start playing a game of picking our battles. Okay, as to and making some informed decisions as to how we want to um, work with Revit. Um, you know, in order to achieve, you know, appropriate results. Okay, so this is the choice between 3D modeling and 2D work. Okay, so I'm just going to show you quickly in this one here, um, probably some 2D work. Okay, some nice simple stuff. So what we've got, okay, and really what I want to look at is perhaps this roof in here. Okay, so um, actually before we do that, Follow the cursor down the bottom here to all my visual controls. Okay, left click on this little cube here, and we're going to change the visual visual style from hidden line, which is the drafting view. We're going to change that to consistent colors. Okay, what that does is just give us a little bit more color. Um, sometimes I find it's a little bit easier to visualize in the first instance. Okay, so what we have here is the roof that we built okay so it's just a generic 125 mil roof but you'll notice that Revit hasn't put any structural information within that roof so it's all it is literally is the roof and this is where it's been cut okay but there's no ceiling joist there's no trusses indicated or anything like that reason being is Revit doesn't really know what we want to achieve there okay and um, certainly in Australia and some sort of my experience is that you know 99.9% .9 of all roofs now are done with trusses, okay, which are a manufactured product. As drafties, you know, it depends on who makes those trusses as to what solution they determine. However, as drafties and designers, etc., we still need to provide a bit of information there, okay. So in this section, let's we can use something called detail lines to basically create, um, you know, a bit of information. So what we do is we can go to our annotate tab at the top here in the ribbon okay and we've got here we've got the detail section okay and these are things that we can draw and add so all I'm after here is a detail line okay with the default there being DL okay okay so this is Revit's drawing straight out of the box drawing tools okay so we're sort of reverting to an AutoCAD type feel okay so we've got a drawing, we've got a little drawing cursor there, okay, we've got here some drawing elements, so lines, rectangles, and polygons, splines, we've got a pick lines tool which is quite handy, okay, and then we've got the line styles, so these are the default lines that we get, so there's a nice range to start off with but we can create more, okay, so, um, but what I might do is I might grab, say, um, Oh, we'll 
we'll try 0.18 pin okay just going to use my line tool here okay I'm just going to zoom down here um, actually I'm just going to take it into thin lines my little thin lines command up there or TL there we go that's a little bit easier for me to see it actually allows me to stand. So all I'm going to do here is just, you know, I'm just going to draw a line all the way across here. Okay, there it is there. Okay, um, I can go into my modify tab here. Okay, and this is where I can modify existing elements. So I've got a nice little tool there, the offset tool. Um, okay, so if I left click on that. Okay, let's just say uh, 90 millimeters there and I'm going to offset and copy that particular line up okay, okay. grab that tool anything grip there grab my little grip there okay there is an extend or a trim function but that rivets does lock in pretty nicely to everything okay so again I'm just going to check in another de detail line this time I'm going to use the um, pick lines tool here I'm going to utilize this bit of information here that the roof has sort of figured out. I'm just going to go left click on that. Don't worry about that right now. Okay, OF for offset. Okay, we're still at 90. We're still going to copy that line. We're going to draw it up like that. And you know, just grab my grips there. Like I said, I'm just going to, I'm using it pretty simply at this stage. Okay. I'm going to be sort of happy with that at this stage. Okay, look, I know for a fact it's not perfect, but that gives us sort of the basic idea. So we could use these detail lines and we can keep repeating this function. We can draw a little truss in there or we can, whichever way you want to go. Okay, and for the sake of a section where we don't know how that truss is going to be manufactured, that's probably going to be enough. Okay, um, if we've been brutally simple about things. So I'll take my thin lines off, just sort of double check my line weight work there. Okay, so that's all good. Um, I can go back to my annotate tab. Um, got a nice little tool here called insulation. Okay, left click on that. That's how with the, so this is like a line tool, very similar to what things like. So I can just left click on that. And uh be pretty really simple there. Okay can't see it right now. I might have to take, go back to my hidden line. There we go. So, anyway, so we've chucked in some insulation. Yeah, we chuck a little bit more in here or something to that effect. Actually that's not going to work because I need some other bits and bobs in there. Okay. So it's not very exciting and um, I think as drafties most of us dread getting to the stage of a particular project where we're just going to go, oh my goodness we've had fun designing, clients happy now we've actually got to document this thing and um, like I said, so Revit gives us the option we could we could do as much of this in 3D as we possibly can um, but the reality is is that we are stuck with you know a reasonable amount of 2D work okay so um, I said, just going to drop back to thin lines you know if we were to put a, um, a top plate in here again DL for thin lines. Um, again, just drawing some lines here. Uh, 45, so 90, 45. So little things like that. Okay, if I go thin lines. Look, in a section at 1 to 50, something like that, that's, you know, you're not going to see a huge amount of detail. Um, and uh, let's see, we can go in there, we could um, populate all this information here so we could manually draw in the, um, you know, the, the, the floor joists, little rafters in there, so it's a massive amount of work that we could do. Um, I'm certainly not going to bore you with that with this video. So that's fundamentally the, the detail lines tool. Okay. Um, so what I might do in the next video though is, is rather than um, you know showing you how to mainly draw all this in, okay, um, we might talk about callouts, 
and um, show you what happens when we do a call out when we have model lines versus 2D work um, and sort of show you how to combat you know um, certain things where we might see inefficiencies okay but we'll see you later apologies for the not quite as exciting video but it is um, a critical element of, of Revit we like I said we still need to do a bit of 2D work and um, I believe it's really important to understand how and when to use that so we'll see you later.